Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Kyler Murray. Somehow, he has decided, it seems like, to declare for the NFL Draft. And I know I'm saying it seems like this is not technically official yet. But it seems like all sources are leading to him going into the NFL, or at least declaring for the draft. The Oakland Athletics are expecting him to enter the NFL draft, and that's a team that drafted him with a top 10 pick in the MLB draft uh, this past year. If you want an MLB perspective on this, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to draft Nick Mark, good friend of the channel. He's going to be doing a video talking about the uh, baseball side of things, so if you're interested in baseball... Definitely make sure to check out Mark's channel. He's doing a video talking about it from that perspective. But obviously, this is mainly a football channel, which means we're going to talk about this from the football perspective of things. So you guys probably know at this point, I do a lot of tape study on prospects. I'm going to be having videos talking about those players coming up. In the near future, I have Jalen Ferguson, which Wheels and I are going to be talking about these three guys on the podcast. And then I'll be doing my individual kind of breakdowns of their abilities and maybe scheme fit, things like that. So make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already for that. And um, I don't. let me know who you want me to do down in the comments section below. I can't show highlights or footage of them really because I'm going to get a copyright claim that almost took down my channel last year when I had a bunch of them. So that's no good. But we're talking about Kyler Murray. And I haven't done tape study on Kyler yet, which is why I'm a little bit hesitant to really like talk him up as much because... I've seen a lot of the games that he's played, but I haven't really clued in. I'm watching these games as a fan, and then I come back later in the offseason, and I watch these games, and I, you know, analyze what they're doing from a football perspective as how they translate to the NFL. You guys know I've been doing this for uh, a few years, at least on YouTube. I've been making videos on it. been doing it for a bit longer than that. I started in 2014, 2013, so four or five years now of doing this, and I've, I've amped up progression each year. But as for Kyler Murray... I do have legitimate concerns about his height and weight because these are things in the NFL that matter, especially at the quarterback position. Kyler Murray is listed at 5'10", 185. I think he's closer to 5'9". It'll be interesting to see what he, he is uh, measured at the combine because if he declares for the NFL draft, he's certainly going to get a combine invitation. And if he decides to accept that invitation, even if he doesn't decide to throw or participate in the on-field drills or run, which... He will run very, very fast, by the way. Probably, I mean, you're looking at a high 4-3, low 4-4. I would say his ceiling is 4-3-6, and his, his low would probably be 4-4-5. So super elite speed for a quarterback, obviously. That goes without saying. He is incredibly fast, very quick. And that is his best trait probably as a quarterback. I think he does have an NFL arm. Although I do think it's average to potentially slightly below average. He's got a great deep ball and his touch is very good. His accuracy is a bit of a concern at times. There are some throws, obviously, that are going to blow you away. Where you're like, oh, this kid has the, you know, the complete package. And he, he is a solid quarterback, obviously. Won the Heisman. And a lot of that, I think, is uh, attributed to him playing in the Big 12. Going up against non-defenses quite a bit. Um, and almost operating as as kind of a spread air raid kind of combo at Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley. And it's an interesting kind of situation with Kyler Murray because you look at a guy that won the Heisman, which I don't really take a whole lot of stock in that. I think you guys would probably come to uh, either disagree or agree with me, but I think you'll come to realize that that's my perspective, how I don't, I don't really care for awards so much when evaluating a player's skill because... I mean, there are so many players that are going to win awards that may not be the best when it comes to translating to the next level. You look at guys that have won it in the past before. Uh, Tim Tebow is a really good example. Johnny Manziel. Troy Smith out of Ohio State who won it, I believe, in 2004? I think 2004. I think Matt Leinert won it in 2006 or so. My years might be a little bit off, but in the general area... Uh, and Adrian Peterson should have won it in 2004, by the way. He was robbed. 
Although the, maybe there's a bit bias there. There's a little bit of bias. But we're talking about Kyler Murray. And the accuracy and consistency is a little bit of a question for him. Obviously, his running ability is not. He is the best mobile quarterback, best running quarterback in this class. And he does have above average ability. And his traits are in general pretty good outside of height, outside of weight. And I know a lot of people who have tried to compare him to Russell Wilson because of the size and, and mobility, which to be fair, Kyler Murray has less of an arm than Russell Wilson. His accuracy is, is probably worse. Uh, although I will say he's definitely faster. He's definitely faster than Russell Wilson. He definitely has more mobility. I don't love the Russell Wilson comparison, although who else would you compare him to? He's five foot nine, maybe five ten. He would be the shortest starting quarterback we've seen in some time. I can't even think of a five ten quarterback that that played at any point in the two thousands. I know Johnny Manziel was shorter. I think he was five eleven, and I know Doug Flutie brings it way back into the like late nineties. And even though he was drafted in 85, played a lot in the CFL, he was 5'10", 185 or so. But also, it's not the 1980s and 90s anymore. Guys are bigger and, and faster and better than they've ever been. As even though, like for me, I think about it, I'm like, oh, the 90s, that wasn't that long ago. We're almost in 2020. The 90s are at the very least 20 years ago now in 2019. So I mean, it's just kind of crazy to think about. But with players being bigger and faster than they've ever been, and Kyler Murray won, probably struggling to see over his NFL offensive lineman. And the first thing that people are going to say about that is, well, look at the Oklahoma offensive line. There's a lot of height. There's potential NFL caliber players on that offensive line. That is true. But you'll see a lot of the damage that Kyler does is by buying time in the pocket. I almost wonder if he's going to struggle at the NFL level because a lot of what he did at Oklahoma was because of extending plays, waiting for things to get open downfield and then making reads kind of uh, on the run outside of the pocket and uh, waiting for things to develop and get deeper. Because that's what it is. When you're smaller, when things obviously work their way down the field, it's going to be easier to see them. It's going to be easier to get touch. And it's going to be easier to loft the ball over your offensive lineman rather than throwing short down. And in the NFL, with pressure coming in as often and as frequent as it has, and you're going to have defenses that can cover downfield like you don't really see in the Big 12. I think if you blitz Kyler Murray on a consistent basis and you force him to make quick reads, he's not going to be able to get the ball over those offensive linemen with enough accuracy consistently enough that he's 5'9". It's a different situation with Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield's almost 6 foot. Drew Brees is 6 foot. Russell Wilson kind of does what Kyler Murray did at Oklahoma a bit. Another guy that really buys time in the pocket and waits for things to get a little bit further downfield. And his offensive line hasn't been great. But with Kyler Murray, if you force him to make quick reads, and I know a counter to this could be, well, it doesn't matter because you blitz him, Kyler Murray's going to evade the sack. He's the most elusive quarterback we've seen in college football and probably will be in the NFL uh, if that's what he decides to do. He still could play baseball. This could just be all a farce. But... If you force him to make quick reads, I don't know if he's going to be able to get the ball there accurately and quickly enough based on his style of play. And I think that's going to be a major concern. And I'm not saying this is a situation where this guy's an undraftable player, because clearly not. And people are going to want to ask me, hey, where does Kyler Murray go in the draft now? And it's such an interesting question because I see him probably as a second or third round talent. Personally, if I was a general manager... I would not take Kyler Murray before the third round. A lot of that would have to be based on size. It, it really does matter. 185 pounds. Durability is going to be an issue if you have 300 guys or 300 pound guys, excuse me, falling consistently on him, depending on how good the offensive line is. Um, so durability is a question, but also the major question of why I wouldn't take him before the third round, which I, I know people are going to hate that. They're going to follow the hype train of Kyler Murray, Heisman winning quarterback. How could you not? He's the best quarterback in the draft now, Bengal. I get that you're going to want to say that, but a big issue with that is this is a guy that could still play baseball and opt to play baseball and, and leave the NFL because he does have a backup plan. He was a top 10 pick in the MLB draft. This is a very good baseball player. Played college baseball at Oklahoma. Was very, very good. He didn't get taken top 10 because he was a big name and a multi-sport athlete. He was taken with the top 10 pick because he's a very, very good college baseball player. Was good in high school as well. 
obviously, if you play college baseball at a D1 level, especially at Oklahoma, a top school, not so much for baseball as they are for football, obviously, but still a very good school as far as recruiting high-level athletes. And he, I, I don't know if he would have played baseball at Texas A&M. You'd have to assume that he would have. I just, I don't know, so I can't speak on that. But obviously, a very, very talented athlete nonetheless. I just couldn't take him before the third round. I know, well, that's why you're not running a team, Bang. Clearly, clearly. Uh, there are no other variables involved with that, obviously. That's the only reason, is because I, I don't have a good recognition of talent, clearly. Uh, but with Kyler Murray, you got you see upside with him. It's just there are certain things counting against him. There are. And what it's going to come down to as far as where he gets drafted is where do teams value him? And I, there's going to be a couple of teams that see Kyler Murray as the best quarterback in this class. It's, it's just going to happen. There are 32 teams. One or two of these guys are going to think that Kyler Murray is the best quarterback in this class. And some of these teams are probably going to view Kyler Murray as a first-round talent. We'll talk about Cliff Kingsbury here in a second, the new Arizona Cardinals head coach. Um, and I'll, I'll dismiss some rumors, I think. But I think Kyler Murray probably sneaks in at the back of the first round. I think there's a chance that even though some of these guys could view Kyler Murray as the top quarterback in the class, I don't think he's the first quarterback off the board. However, given what's behind Dwayne Haskins, I do like Will Greer. I do like Easton Stick. I'm not a particularly huge Drew Locke or Daniel Jones fan, but Kyler Murray very well could be the second quarterback off the board, which could be in the first round, could be in the second round. He probably doesn't slip to the third, although that's where I think his, his true talent is based on all things considered, if he was taller, I, I think it's a little bit of a different story. But still, it's hard to, to say that because based on his college play style, he'd maybe play differently if he wasn't as fast and if he was tall. I, I don't know. It's, it's a, that's a weird question for me. But I do think he probably sneaks into the back end of the first round, even though that's where I w probably wouldn't have his true talent. As far as Cliff Kingsbury, new Arizona Cardinals head coach, was at Texas Tech, was signed for like 23 days or something to USC before going now to the Arizona Cardinals to be their head coach. Kind of a weird hire. But like a month ago, Cliff Kingsbury said, yeah, if I was an NFL team picking at number one, I would take Kyler Murray number one overall. So now people are saying, oh, could Josh Rosen get traded? I think that's a little bit of hyperbole on the part of Cliff Kingsbury. I think there is absolutely no chance, no way Kyler Murray is taken at number one overall by the Cardinals and that Josh Rosen is traded or that there's a quarterback controversy in camp. I think there is absolutely zero chance of that. And you could play this over with the Curb Your Enthusiasm music if that happens. I, I think, again, there's absolutely no chance that happens. And you'll hear Cliff Kingsbury say that in the next couple of days, if he even chooses to address that at all, because that's going to be the next question, right? He's going to have all these press conferences and interviews and things like that as a new head coach at the Cardinals. They're going to ask him, hey, you said this about Kyler Murray. You're picking a number one overall now, coach. Hey, is Kyler Murray on the board for you guys? It can't be. It can't be with Josh Rosen as your quarterback. Um, that's pretty much going to do it for me, guys. Let me know what you think. Make sure to check out Mark's channel. Link is down in the description. I, I hope I've kind of given you my opinion on Kyler Murray. I will do some now advanced tape study on him. We'll have to. We'll talk about this on the podcast. If you guys haven't been watching the seventh round bus podcast with myself and Wheels, we did episode one, came out a couple of days ago. Make sure to check it out. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.